is a very passive way of chasing pelagic species. I'm out on the water today and there's a few, I think, schools of tuna and mackerel cruising through our local waters. I could be trolling for them or chucking live baits and stuff. Instead, I'm slow drifting dead baits. I've got a few pillies out there. Got some mustard gang rigs, lightly weighted. And all I'm doing now, I'm slowly drifting that way. I've marked out some nice fishing bait on the sounder. Initiated my drift, let my lines out the back to around about the 15, 20 metre mark, which is where I'm sending my bait. And now I'm drifting through those fish, hoping that the way I'm presenting that pilchard, is gonna get the interest of pelagic species that are in the area. Oh. What have we got here? What have we got here? Ah, come on. Up and come. Midwater bait. There's a lot of bait fish down there. A few archers coming through and something has fell for that pilchard. Coming up now. Come on. Lovely. Look at that. Shows you how snapper are such pelagic feeders at times. We're drifting around, following schools of bait. I know there's mackerel down there, I've been bitten off a couple of times. But in amongst all the mix, there's other archers in there chasing this bait, and this is what they're turning out to be. Very, very neat, the whole food chain in action. The drifting bait, it's bringing them undone. Technique, very simple when you're doing this. Just requires a little bit of mental arithmetic. I know there's fish feeding in that 15 to 30 metre mark. And I've weighted my bait enough to let me get down there subtly. I'm feeding out what I think's enough line to get me down to that depth. And then, use of rod holders. Reel's engaged, let that bait sit up and drift behind the boat. And I've rigged it up in a way that it's gonna swim upright, head upright, and look like the real deal. It's a case then of just watching your rod any sign of a bite, pick it up, feed it to the fish. You want some consistent weight before you lift the rod and set those hooks. Quite often the rod holder will do it for you and then it's a case of make sure that your drag setting's right so you don't have rods getting destroyed and pulled out of boats. All in all, it's a very passive approach, but very effective as well. It's a bit of a nudge there, come on. Whoa. Very often that rocking of the boat kicks those baits up and down and it gives it that added wounded appeal. So, let your boat do a lot of the work. I did say it was a passive approach. And... Good one for the lazy angler. I can feel the salvo. <laughs> but it certainly means you can G up some fish. Oh. Here we go. I think maybe I might have hooked my mackerel. That's what I was here for. Oh, come on, what do we got? And don't they love a bait fish that looks like it's strayed from the pack? And when you present a bait like this, that's exactly what you're doing. You're making all those predators down there think that your bait has left that school of bait and it's out there on its own, which makes it easy pickings. Look at that. Spanish mackerel and snapper. Love it. You can see those Mustad 7-0 tarpons. They're great ganging hooks. Plenty of gape, ideally three, three of them are ideally suited to a pilchard size. And all in all, when these guys stick in, they don't let go. Beautiful, let's get him on board. Lovely Spanish on those mustard tarpons, seven O's. Wilson live fiber rod, beautiful, light, sensitive. It's a perfect tool for chasing these guys on baits. <laughs> oh, having too much fun. Should let my wife see this, she'll stop me doing this. I'm supposed to be out working. And I'm working really hard. I'm building up a sweat. Oh, here we go. Oh well, that's a tough gig. What a tough gig it is. And you gotta chase mackerel and snapper and come home with the goods all using a very versatile drifted boat approach if you don't think it works very well check out the sweat the fish slime on me and slapping in the boat <laughs> the 
rig that I'm using to drift these pilchards around the ocean consists of a three gang rig, mustard tarp and seven O's. Get your ganging claws, like so, open up the eyes of those hooks and then clamp them together to form that three hook gang. Now because there's a few bodies around, I'm using about a 10 centimetre, I guess little head to this rig of graphite metal tress in 20 kilo. It's a knottable wire and it allows me to protect myself against those fish that want to bite the head of a bait. If I was just attaching that to the top of this rig, very often you get bitten off. Through that metal tress, I've got a, a running sinker. Depending on the current you get on any day and, and wind and how fast you're getting moved through an area, you can change that. Just make sure it's heavy enough to get you to where the bait is. From there, we want to rig up our bait. Good old WA Pilchard, IQF style. Get down to your local bait store, pick them up. Tail hook through the tail of the bait. Middle hook dug into the belly of the fish, like so. Wiggle it around and then top hook just ahead of the gills. Push that in, just wiggle it through so that it pierces the head of the bait and sits like so. And there you go. We've got a bait that wins in action that's going to swim head down and attract the attention of any predators. Good little bite. While I drop this bait back down to depth, I'll give you a bit of a talk through the rig or the outfit that I'm using at the moment. Very versatile, very light. It's one of the Wilson's rods, one of their live fibre stable of rods. It's a four to 10 kilo snapper. Beautiful rod for boat work, plenty of grip. It's light, it can handle these sorts of fish. Fast runners, reef fish, doesn't matter. It's gonna handle whatever punishment you can throw at it. Plenty of butt length to put underneath the armpit, give you a bit of leverage. I've matched that up with a 4,000 size reel using 20 pound braid, high vis strain. It's a very soft braid, but very, very direct contact to your bait. It just means I'm gonna feel everything that's going on down there. Any bite, any load up on that bait, it's gonna get transferred straight away through to this rod. Light, simple outfit, and very effective for this kind of fishing. One of those moments where it had to happen. I drifted across a patch of bait and there was 20 or 30 archers sitting underneath it. I sat and looked at rod tips and one's just keeled over and I'm half expecting that one to go because we're very slowly drifting at the moment. The wind's back right out. There's not a lot of current down there. So I'm ever so slowly drifting. These pilchards, ah, oh, it's a snapper. There you go. It ran like a pelagic. I honestly thought it was. I'll fool you sometimes. The good thing when you're drifting a bait is because it's moving away from the fish, they'll very often chase it. Gives them that little bit of come and catch me if you can. And as opposed to sitting at anchor sometimes waiting for a fish to take a bait where they look at it for too long. This doesn't give them the chance to do that. It's, it's in their space and then it's moving away and it does force fish to make a decision, which some days is a really good thing. There we go, we're waiting, waiting and drifting pillies and chases some pelagics, but we are getting close enough to bottom to tempt some of the roofies. And <laughs> you can't complain with banging those guys. There's a lovely, just little snapper, just starting to get the bump on his head. There we go. There we go. Found a patch of fish. Just the benefit of drifting around. When you drift with baits, drifting with lures for that matter, you get to cover ground, which means 
when you're fishing for species that are roving around hunting bait fish it's your best chance of seeing as many of them as possible and I believe trick to catching a lot of fish seeing as many fish as you can and a very versatile technique reefies pelagics doesn't really matter where you are around the coastline chasing kingies chasing codes chasing tuna they'll come and eat them and look at that oh yeah that's a very big spot of mackerel that is a cracking spot <laughs> not quite done yet Whew! lovely it was a late minute decision of mine got no mates to fish with I knew there's been a few pelagics around and the reefies are starting to come good as well change of the seasons I thought why not let's get out and drift some baits around and see what we can come up with you <laughs> come on let's just show you to the camera there we go that's a quality spotted mackerel it's a bit of a chunk good five or so kilo fish lovely afternoon change of the seasons little session on my own doing it nice and easy drifting baits simple rig as simple as it gets running sinker on top of some mustard gangs pillies find the bait find the fish drift through it and hold on tight it's as easy as that i want to get this guy back in the water i want to hit the road home oh. it's bill classen here from the fishing show and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.